Today, my guest is Edna Ellison. Lord, I am totally surrendered mm -hmm. to you, and I can dare to pray that you would use me as part of your kingdom's work. Live your faith and pass it on. Share the gospel clear and strong. Stand for, claim your heritage of truth. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today, my guest is Edna Ellison. She is an author, she is a humorist, mm -hmm. and a speaker. And um, I would just like you to tell us a little bit about yourself to start off with. Well, I'm from South Carolina, and I am a mom with two children. My husband died at a football game one Friday mm -hmm. night when he was 49, and I was 42, and so I have uh, gone back to school and become a a teacher and uh, God's been good to me all my life and given me so many blessings after those days long ago. Uh, mm -hmm. When you have two teenage children to raise by yourself, wow. it really makes one a stronger person. And I have grown to depend on the Lord year after year after year. Oh, well, that's good. Well, you have a new book called yes. Friend, to, Friend Friend to Friend, Enriching Friendships Through a Shared Study of Philippians. Mm -hmm. Philippians is such a wonderful book, isn't it? Oh, I love Philippians. It's my favorite book of the Bible. And when I was asked to do a Bible study, I knew which book of the Bible I would choose because Philippians is just the joy book. Mm -hmm. And anyone who loves to laugh and anyone who can find joy in all the sorrows we have in life should know about Philippians. And what I I've um, learned about this little book is that people have taken it to use two by two with a mentor and then the uh, mentee. Or we found a wonderful word in the Old Testament called Maria. And Maria is the Hebrew word that we might use for dear young friend or a young person that we are mentoring. And so if an older woman mentors a younger person, you can say mentor and Maria form a mentoring pair. And they can use this little book, Friend to Friend, to bring joy to both of them. Whatever age we are, we can find joy in the world. That's great. And this can also be used with women who are the same age, right? Yes, it certainly can. And is it specifically geared to women? Yes, it is specifically geared to women. And what I found that most people use it for small Bible book studies mm -hmm. in their church as a, as a woman's group that gathers in the church. Okay. Well, um, you talk in that book, you can put it down now so you don't have to keep holding it. Um, you talk in that book about what you call a dare prayer. Oh, can you explain yes, what that is? I can. Uh, you've heard probably of a push prayer, which is pray until something happens. <laughs> and so uh, I know that some of us begin to pray outrageous prayers. I have another book and this idea first started in it. It's called Deeper Still. And in Deeper Still, we talk about how our prayer life increases as we go deeper and deeper into the heart of God. And so we begin with little surface prayers like, uh, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And we're really not praying. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just mimicking what our mom told us to as little children. And as we deepen our prayer life then, we begin to pray in a deeper and a deeper way. And so we go through a selfish prayer then just praying, gimme, gimme, gimme. And then finally we really mess up with the Lord and we uh, d dabble in sin and we begin to pray some serious prayers and then some reconciliation prayers with the Lord until we finally get to the point where we are just praying all the time. We have steadfast prayers. From early in the morning, we wake up praying, Oh Lord, please help me all day today. And then the last thing we do before we go to bed at night is say, Good night, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then um, we pray surrendered prayers. In the end, all of the gimme, gimme, gimme prayers that we prayed when we were in that selfish mode turn out to be outrageous prayers in that we say, Lord, I am totally surrendered mm -hmm. to you, and I can dare to pray that you would use me as part of your kingdom's work, and we are totally surrendered. The things we wanted in the gimme, gimme, gimme stage, we've forgotten about those things because then we begin to want the will of God. Mm -hmm. Whatever is His will, right. then that becomes our will, and we really can pray in His time and in mm -hmm. His manner because we're praying, Lord, you show me 
what door you'll open, you'll open and I will walk through it. And I'll walk through it with power. And um, I have a friend named Yvonne Ortega. I understand she's been on your program too. And uh, she says, you know, that uh, she dares, dares to pray and the Lord just blesses those outrageous prayers. Mm -hmm. She's praying for millions of people to come to know the Lord through her. Yes. And I pray that way in intercessory prayer for missionaries. Mm -hmm. When the Berlin Wall came down, mm -hmm. an older friend of mine said, well, I'm not surprised, Edna. I've been praying for the Berlin Wall to come down for 10 years. Wow. And I thought, oh, how shallow I am as a Christian because I've never prayed. I just thought the Berlin Wall would be there forever. <laughs> and, and we tend to accept things because we think that's beyond my control and there's nothing I can do. But if we pray dare prayers, mm -hmm. then we are praying, Lord, I dare to pray for this outrageous thing. It's such an outrageous prayer that people would think you were a little bit touched in the head. <laughs> But, if you but nothing is too much for no. the Lord. Things that are impossible with mm -hmm. us are possible with the Lord. And He knows we have that power if He is infusing us with His Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the way I live my life now. I dare to pray for whatever it is that seems impossible. And I go for those kinds of prayers. God is so good to me. <laughs> the very thing I used to pray for is probably the the full crumb point of my dare. I, I Let's say I always said, I don't want to be a writer. That's the most boring thing I could think of. And now I'm saying, Lord, you use my writing to change the world. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, I'm praying for a million dollar bestseller for my publisher, who is New Hope Publishing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just hoping they'll get a million dollar bestseller any day now. They've only been in business, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. But they are an up-and-coming publisher, and so they're excited about serving the Lord. Now, I've asked the Lord if He wants that book to be mine, that would be okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. Right. I'm praying for them that mm -hmm. they'll do some spectacular things. Mm -hmm. And I believe that those things will happen. Right, and faith. it's all for the kingdom of God, oh, for God's yes. glory. If that is what His will is, right. then I want to be one of those prayers warriors is mm -hmm. they are praying exactly what God would have me do and that's I right. really don't care if people think I'm crazy anymore that's okay <laughs> I am crazy you know all of us are just a little bit crazy if we love the Lord, the Lord. <laughs> yes the uh, Bible says that what is foolishness to the Greeks is very important in the kingdom oh, and all right. of us need to look in spiritual ways and not just the logical way that the Greeks mm -hmm. would uh, look at some empirical re reasoning that's uh, very important to them, mm -hmm. but not from a Christian perspective. So, right. how good God is. Amen. <laughs> he is. Now, you told me that you do a comedy piece about generational yes. differences. I do. Right? Yes, generational differences. Yeah, could you tell me I, a little bit about that? When I turned 65, I had read Titus 2 all my life, mm -hmm. and when it says the older women should teach the young, I thought, well, let those older women do that. But when I became 65, the government declared me old, and they sent me a paycheck every month. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, this retirement is pretty good to have your Social Security check coming in once a month. And I began to realize, you know, I'm going to have to step up to the plate mm -hmm. and really be that older, godly woman. Most of us don't want to think of ourselves as number one, older, and number two, godly. We really we want someone else to be known as the godly woman. Mm -hmm. And we want to be that flirty, attractive, um, admired person. But I have found that it's true. Women really cannot accept that they are the representative of God in their community. Mm -hmm. They don't feel worthy. And they feel so sinful because of past things they've done mm -hmm. that they think, surely, I'm not all God has here to carry on His kingdom. And but He really uses the weak. Oh, yes. yes. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yes. Our uh, weakness is magnified mm -hmm. in His perfection. That's or, right. Or His perfection is magnified in our weakness. It mm -hmm. works both ways. How wonderful it is to serve a God that will do that. 
that will take us from one stage to the other. I was born during the Second World War years, mm -hmm. and so my generation is known as the silent generation. And those older women who were born before the war, they have a different perspective on life than the silent generation. It's not that we didn't try to carry on the uh, traditions of our mothers and pass it along to the baby boomers who came along after the war. After all those guys came home mm -hmm. from overseas, then of course they started families immediately mm -hmm. and they had this, we had this giant horde of younger women and on the other side uh, with my generation we had this large group of older women. My grandmother for instance was one of 13 siblings and her husband, my grandfather, was one of 12. Mm -hmm. In fact, they called it in that day cheaper by the dozen because right. everyone had at least a dozen children. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was not so as birth control became known and, mm -hmm. and became used more effectively. And so I was pushing against two large groups, the silent generation right in the middle, born mm -hmm. during those war years. And as we, there were very few of us that got to be born during those mm -hmm. years. And so we just had very little voice. And when the baby boomers came along in large groups of, of people, then they had their own traditions and there weren't enough of my generation to pass along those traditions. So there was a big gap in knowledge from what one mother could pass along to children and grandchildren. And in my generation, there just weren't enough of us to pass along my mother's traditions to my children's tradition. And my daughter will tell you, she's a member of the baby boomers generation and I'm a member of the uh, silent generation. And uh, what the older women did was to revere uh, humility. And when you said to this older woman, uh, you know, you have a lot to offer this young lady. Well, she would say, oh, no, I would not be prideful enough mm -hmm. to tell someone else that I have all the answers. Like, you just follow me, honey, and I'll straighten you out. You do everything I tell, tell you. Well, an older woman just would not do that. And mm -hmm. she was taught that she should be humble and quiet and, and not be so brassy. And here came all these people in the baby boomer generation who were pampered a little because the war was over mm -hmm. and their parents wanted them to have better than they did. And so this group wanted everything top notch. They wanted a youth group in the church that had a band of its own and musicians and they were well trained in, in church traditions. And so there's a big difference between a woman who was born in 1930 or a woman who was born in 1950 and then those born in 1970. Uh, in the 60s, the birth control bill came along. Mm -hmm. And so we had another gap. Mm -hmm. uh, children just were not being born uh, every day. And there's another generation gap there that's called Gen X. Everybody's mm -hmm. heard about Generation X. Right. And they also ha have little voice. They begin to respect the traditions of their grandmothers. The, the, the quilting and the canning vegetables and uh, not long ago I, yeah and knitting yes. yes I was in a conference not long ago and I said what do you young women there were lots of young beautiful 20s and 30 year old women and I said what do you want from an old lady like me what would you like to know and one of them raised her hand very tentatively and she said are, are you really are you serious? Do you really want to know what we'd like to know? And I said, yes, I really am. And she said, do you know how to can tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, I know how to can tomatoes. My mother and grandmother taught me. But here's the difference. That's the hottest, sweatiest work that I can ever think of. I would never dream of teaching someone to can tomatoes. I would think, you can buy canned tomatoes in a jar they don't, or in a can and they cost hardly anything. Why would you want to raise tomatoes in your yard and can them on the hottest days of the year in the depth of summer when all of those tomatoes come in by barrels? And it's just not something I would ever think of doing. Mm -hmm. But I realize there's a generation who needs to know these practical things that I've learned through experience. Mm -hmm. And I need to be a woman who is teaching them mm -hmm. those things, how to live in their home and be a blessing to their children. Mm 
and a blessing to their husband and learn how that, that their husband will be happier if mm -hmm. they are happier and mm -hmm. they can be happy on the inside regardless of outer circumstances. Mm -hmm. When I told my son that once, I said, Jack, your happiness does not depend on outer circumstances. And we were talking, he went on to another topic and then he said, Mom, tell me what you said a few minutes ago. It's just now sinking in. What did you say about outer circumstances? And I said, your inner happiness does not depend on outer circumstances. And he said, you have never said that to me before. And that is key, that whatever we do, whatever is approaching us and whatever we do in the area of stress and depression and horrible days and a bad hair day or a, whatever we think looms large. If you break a nail, women who grow beautiful nails and they have them polished and they want them to look exactly right. If one breaks, that is a giant tragedy in the life of that woman. But what he said to me that day was, I think you're on to something here. Our happiness should not depend upon what's happened to us today. We need to be filled so with the Spirit, so much with the Spirit, that we do not allow the winds and waves of life to toss us around, as it says in the mm -hmm. New Testament, that we can be steady. And he said, that's what older women know how to do. Mm -hmm. They've seen the ups and downs of life. And they have so much to share with somebody like me, he said. And this is my own son who's grasping this concept for the very first time. And now I hear him passing that on as a godly man oh, to wonderful. his daughter's generation. And what a wonderful thing that we can take what God has taught us and then pass it to our children and our children's children. And we need to think a more outrageous prayer and a, a dare prayer more outrageous than that. We need to think about every young person that I come into contact with, every young housewife who's 20, or every teenage woman in my church, young woman in my church, every young 10-year-old who's out in the yard. I need to be a witness to every single one of them. With a five-year-old, it might just be saying, do you see that bird out in the yard? God made that bird. And that's a witness to a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. And with a 10-year-old, I can talk about her algebra that she's learning for the very first time and what an equation is. Just mm -hmm. some simple concept that she's learning at 10 that is exciting to her right now because she's never heard it before. And then relate that to the gospel. But there's mm -hmm. so many things that we have as wisdom, and we don't even recognize it. We're too busy worrying about the broken fingernails of life or a bad hair day or whatever else it is that's really concerning us that particular day. We need to shift our focus mm -hmm. over to the spiritual and what we as one generation can do. I have a book called Woman to Woman mm -hmm. and Woman to Woman goes into details about generations, one generation after another and what uh, a um, person born before World War II thinks what a person born during those war years, the silent generation thinks, mm -hmm. and what happens to a baby boomer, how do they think, and mm -hmm. then how does a Generation X woman look at life, and then now the millennials mm -hmm. that have passed through the new 21st century uh, Maya post. I was just thinking, how do you, it seems to me you have, <clears throat> excuse me, especially with some of the really younger generations, mm -hmm. you have to earn a hearing. Yes, that's how, right. How would you do that? Well, I have found that you just ask. Mm -hmm. You just say, point blank, what is it that you'd like to know from a little old lady like me? And they will tell you. Another thing is, that's very important is just to be available to them. Mm -hmm. Very often we think they don't want us and our Humility is blocking our speaking. Well, it's really kind of them. a false humility, isn't it? Yes, it yeah. is, and that's what I call it in the book. As a matter of fact, it is a false humility, mm -hmm. humility and it's keeping you from doing. Because true, will of true God. humility sometimes it makes you do things like go on camera or write books when you really don't want to. <laughs> yes, do it. exactly. Right. You, you do God's will. You, yes, yeah. you are exactly yeah. right. It, 
it is amazing. But you, there are three words that I can tell you. If you have a young person and you want to, to communicate with this younger person, you want to tell her so much, but you know she's not listening. She does. She thinks you're over the hill and an old fuddy-duddy and too square <laughs> for her. And that is meet her needs. Mm -hmm. You look at that person and say, okay, she's a mom that has three little preschoolers. I can keep those children and let her go up to the movies mm -hmm. one night with her husband or with her friend or, or whatever. Is that what I could do to gain an, an ear with mm -hmm. her so she'll listen to a few things I'm saying? Yeah. Or uh, can I give her a book that is a Bible study? Even though she loves the Lord, she doesn't have time for Him. Mm -hmm. And it may be she can't afford to buy a little Bible mm -hmm. study book. You could take her out to lunch if you have more money than she does. Mm -hmm. Very often that would be a kind thing to do. Just yeah. say, I have two tickets to whatever it is, a, a concert in town, and I can't find anyone who'd like to go with me. Would you like to go to a concert with me mm -hmm. uh, two weeks from now? I remember when I was a mom of preschoolers and I yearned for adult conversation. Oh, All I knew how I remember to say, that too. Yes, you just said mama and dad and you knew a lot about mm -hmm. potty training for instance, but no really good intellectual conversation with an adult. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to drop by and offer to wash dishes or whatever they need at the moment without making fun of their dishwashing techniques oh, right. <laughs> or the yeah. stack full of dishes that's sitting over there. Yeah. My mother-in-law was a sweet woman and when she came to visit me she would come in and say, Edna, would it bother you if I wash these dishes in the sink? And I always said, oh no, not only would it bother me but I would just bless you mm -hmm. if you would wash the dishes in the sink. It's something I couldn't get around to. So fill their it's needs. too busy. Yeah. You just fill the needs mm -hmm. of that younger person. That is key to winning their hearts. And mm -hmm. then they really yearn for an older woman's wisdom. Mm -hmm. But they are too shy to ask. Mm -hmm. And we're too humble, we think, to, to burst into their life and try to share with well, one of the things that I've noticed with the older generations is there's a lot of focus on their ills, their their aches and pains and that kind yes. of stuff. And I know that, that they're real, mm -hmm. but do you have any advice for kind of overcoming that so that they can be of service in the Lord's work? Yes. Number one is prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, they can pray for those young mothers. Mm -hmm. Number two is they can offer their funds. Very often, uh, people who are older have more money than they've ever had in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they have discretionary funds. Uh, for that very reason that you mentioned, they're too sick to get out and spend the money shopping. Mm -hmm. Their knees don't work as well as they used to. Mm -hmm. I may be facing knee surgery right now. I um, had some knee pain and my doctor gave me a cortisone shot, shot in the knee. And so uh, we don't like to admit we're getting old, but when we do have to have those services of doctors, it's good to remember that there are people who uh, who can still move around. I have a young Maria, a young mentee, who carries my boxes at conferences. She and I speak together often, and uh, she's still able-bodied and thin and young and healthy, and we love speaking together. I love it because she takes my boxes in, my boxes of books to sell and my rolling carts full of all the things that go on the bookstore or my props. If I'm doing comedy, I may have a box full of hats or whatever that I'm doing, and she carries all those things with me. What a joy to have a younger woman as a friend. Oh, it's a yes. great thing. Yeah. I hope that some of your listeners will decide to make friends with another person by meeting that person's needs. Mm -hmm. And what a joy it is for the younger woman who's just going crazy, perhaps, without any adult to talk to. And that sweet little lady who lives next door or two doors down mm -hmm. might be the godsend that she's looking for, especially if she doesn't have God in her life. That's right. Oh, 
how good God is to us that he brings those little holy coincidences Mm -hmm. into our lives of another woman living right next door or down the street or maybe someone who needs a cup of sugar or whatever and we can be there for them with whatever little thing it is that they need. I believe God directs those kinds of hookups. um, One of the things that I think is outstanding in the book Friend to Friend, at the end of each chapter there's a little uh, paragraph called The Mystery of Transformation. And it takes the opposite of whatever's been talked about. For instance, there's one that's called Inside Out. The whole chapter is about everything being inside out. Mm -hmm. And it talks about finding joy on the inside, regardless of the circumstances, as we've talked about, on the outside. Another one talks about a young man that my husband found lying down on the yellow line in the middle of a road Mm. uh, who was on drugs. And he certainly had a transformation. No one understood the mystery of how he transformed, but he was unrecognizable. That night, my husband found him. He had no clothes on except for jeans, no underwear, no shirt. And my husband uh, worked at our city hall, Mm -hmm. and so he gave him a place to spend the night there in one of the empty cells in the jail and uh, just kept the door open. It was like a little private bedroom, although it was not luxurious. And this young man had been high on drugs for days. And um, I saw my husband, uh, I met him at a Bible study. He was coming from work and I was coming from home. and We met in another home that night and he had a young man with him and I thought, Oh, why couldn't John, the guy he found on the street that night, why couldn't he look like this clean-cut young man? And why couldn't he just move from that life of drugs into a life of confidence in Christ? And finally, uh, I sidled over to my husband and said, that's a cute little guy you've got with you. And uh, is he Mr. G's uh, grandson? I thought it was someone who was already there. And he said, no, that's John, the guy that we met that night in the middle of the road, all high on drugs. And he said all the guys down at City Hall have helped him and encouraged him. And he joined our Bible study the next morning that was held in the jail. They always had a men's mm-hmm. Bible study, and some of the guys that worked there helped to lead it. And so now he was bringing him to our Bible study in a home in the neighborhood. And that young man came to that Bible study for several years and then made it on his own, finally reconciled with his family who had kicked him out years before. And uh, It's an amazing, these divine appointments. Oh, yes, What God does. You're exactly right. Absolutely amazing. Stumble on someone Mm -hmm. and uh, then God makes glory and blessing out of that. That's right. Well, I just want to thank you for being our guest today and... Uh, I want you to tell listeners how they can find you and your books. Okay, great. Um, I am Edna, E-D-N-A, Ellison with an E, E E-L-L-I-S-O-N, and my website is ednaellison.com. It's really easy to find. I have written 25 books, and about 12 or 15 of them are there, and you can buy them from my website. So by all means, do go. And I just wish you all the blessings and happiness. May you find real friends as you read this book called Friend to Friend. And it's a great book about sharing. I think it's great just because I love Philippians, and I love the Lord and His work. I hope you'll have a great day in Him.